Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I'm joined with Vanessa from Vanessa Joy Photography. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for the invite. So I'm here at Wedding NBA, and I decided to double dip a little bit and call some of the coolest creators and wedding vendors over to do some interviews. And of course, because you are quite awesome and also have a YouTube channel. Thank you. This just felt like <laughs> the most natural connection. It is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, we already have talked way too much. <laughs> yeah. We were supposed to have started recording like, a while ago, and that didn't happen. <laughs> no. So you do photography and online education for photographers, correct? Yes, yes, both of them. A lot of gear-related stuff, so if you're going to head to my YouTube channel, a lot of photographers will love it, but also marketing as well. Yes, we mm -hmm. love a good marketing opportunity. Yes. But you're also a wedding photographer by trade. By trade. Which is why I was like, I'm going to pick your brain, because yes. there are some things <laughs> that we probably should talk about. Mm -hmm. Because you guys all the time are asking, what should we look for in a photographer? And I'm like, well, I can tell you my opinion, but I'm not entirely sure, or I can't tell you from a photographer's perspective. And you also asked me what red flags you should look for. So I, that's where the expert comes in. And mm -hmm. we're just gonna pick her brain today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so kicking things off, what should clients be looking for for their ideal dream photographer? Number one, you want to like their photos. And I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but I think we get into a mindset of light and airy or dark and moody mm. or photojournalistic yeah. or <laughs> candid. And those things mean different things to the photographer, to your parents, to yourself. So it really doesn't matter. The point is, do you like their photos? Great. Step one. <laughs> Done. Yeah. And what about like seeing full galleries? Oh, um, so important because it's easy. I mean, it's easy for me to take my phone and take 10 great pictures and throw them on my Instagram right. or my website. You want to see a full wedding gallery during the time of year that your wedding is. Oh, okay, wait. Mm -hmm. I've never actually, because of lighting? Because the lighting, like, because because... The lighting. right. So, for example, if I'm going to do a winter wedding in the Northeast, that means the sun is setting by like 4.30. Yeah. Which, if they didn't want to do a first look, means that I'm taking photos in the dark. Right. And you need to know what that looks like. I have never considered that the time of year would be important. I was always Super like, just, just get a full gallery, like make, or a couple mm -hmm. of them. But um, also, could you explain the importance of getting a full gallery? Like, why is that an important thing? Wedding photographers are a jack of all photography genres. So we have to do still life, we have to do families and portraiture and landscapes. Yeah. So you wanna make sure that your photographer is strong in all of those things. Weirdly enough, I think having a strength in family photos is probably one of the most important because it can oh. be the most stressful time of the wedding day. It is. It's like 20 minutes. That's all it is. Of insanity. <laughs> well, it can be. I get mine done in seven to 10 minutes and there is no insanity. How the heck? How the heck do you get family photos done in seven to 10 minutes? Um, it is what I call speed posing. I have a whole thing, you can go to speedposing.com, but it is a process where you strategically yeah. build up and break down in a way where people are moving the least, particularly the bride or brides, because they're the ones that take the longest to move. And I just do it in such a way where I'm able to really seven to 10 minutes, I can do a whole family photo I list. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. Um, I know you're moving to Austin soon. So mm -hmm. maybe we could figure out working a wedding together just so I can witness this in person. Absolutely. Because that sounds, uh, photographers, I don't know where you are, but if you could please check that out on behalf of all wedding planners everywhere, we would really appreciate that. Yeah. Because that's not something that we see super often. It's not, it's not easy. It's not simple. It's chaotic. It is because most photographers will ask their clients and their couples, hey, what family photo, give me the list. Yeah. But I don't do that. I don't really let them give me the list. I say, who is in your family? I'm gonna make you a list because yeah. one, it's gonna take me three and a half minutes to make versus it's gonna take them three and a half days because right. they're gonna forget groups or whatever. So then I create the list in the order in which I know it will function the best, give it to the client, say, hey, is there anything you wanna add or take away? And now it's just all in a neat little bow. I, <clears throat> I am completely befuddled. <laughs> this sounds like the most incredible, because I've never experienced anything like that. Yeah, like family photos, usually are just like, I mean, sometimes they go smoothly, but it's still gonna be 20 minutes or a minute yeah. per pose. And we're just, we're going through so many oh, things. No, definitely not a minute per pose, probably oh, okay. three per minute at okay. least. Yeah. I'm really glad you're an online educator. <laughs> <laughs> which brings us to the second thing you yeah. want your wedding photographer to have, which is experience. <laughs> yes. Now, what does experience look like? Because 
because I get this question all the time, um, or I used to, uh, like, how, how many years have you, what, what kind of experience do you have when clients are right. pot potential, <laughs> potential clients are interviewing me? And it's like, well, it feels like I'm being measured against like a, a yardstick of right. experience. So what does that look like? What should clients be looking for from a photographer? A year standpoint or what? Well, you could think about it as how many weddings have you photographed? Hmm. You could think about it as how many years, but the goal, at least in my opinion, the goal is that you're experienced in my type of wedding hmm. multiple times, not necessarily the same venue. If they photograph at your venue, that's so irrelevant. It's one of the most I feel, irrelevant questions I I feel the same exact way because clients will be like, have you worked here before? I'm like, I've repeated one venue once. Right. It, Everyone it just, is different. It doesn't matter. No. Um, but experience it, to the point where you know how to handle a wedding day and you know how to do it with grace and calm. And that's a whole other thing. That's a, that, <laughs> which brings us to our next point, personality and demeanor. Like yes. that is, I mean, you guys know I am a nut about this when it comes to photographers, videographers, and your wedding planner. You want to make sure that you find someone whose personality you enjoy because otherwise, like those are the three vendors that are going to be in your face on your wedding day for an extended period of Not time. Not just a wedding day. We're like dating them for a year before yeah. and then six yeah. months after too. Yes. We still deal with our clients, which I think is something that a lot of vendors don't get. That's a whole nother video <laughs> that, you know, the wedding day is not yeah. the day and goodbye. We're still hanging out with you afterwards. So you better like your photographer. You're going to have a very miserable dating experience. Yes. <laughs> that's going to be a very long, like two years. <laughs> yeah. like you're you're going to be out of that relationship really quickly. Yeah, you're going to be sending breakup letters at the end of it. <laughs> Dear John. No. <laughs> Hi. 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 Sorry to interrupt, but, um, the coolest code offer just came in for us for photography and videography. So if you're watching this and you're still looking for a photographer or a videographer, do I have a deal for you? Our friends over at Lily and Lime, they are a national company here um, in the United States. So if you're outside of that, I don't, I don't know if this applies to you, but those who are here, um, they're giving you $200 off both photography and videography packages with code Jamie 200. So if you've been on the fence, this is a really affordable network of photographers and videographers here in the States. If you've been on the fence on whether you should hire a professional photographer or a professional videographer, use this code and thank me later. I'm gonna go ahead and link it right up here. Check them out. This honestly, their packaging is so affordable as is, but having a massive code like this for $200 off Make something like videography a lot more achievable for those of you that are balling on a budget. So sorry to interrupt, um, but you should you should definitely go check that out ASAP, rock style, because I don't know how long that uh, that code's gonna last. So hurry. Okay, back to your regular schedule of programming. Thank you. So we we talked about the good things that people should be looking for, but obviously the title of this video is like red flags, which right? is so popular right now. <laughs> so popular. I'm totally right gonna now. put the emoji in the title. By the way. I'm totally gonna put the emoji in the title. <laughs> That's how the people got here. Okay. That's right. <laughs> What are some red flags, in your opinion, that clients should be looking for? The biggest red flag is turnaround time. If you have ever been like a bridesmaid or a groomsman or like one of your friends got married, you've probably heard the horror story of six months later, I haven't even seen my wedding photos yet. Yeah. It's, there's no excuse. And I know it's 2021 right now and I know wedding professionals are so swamped, but I just find no excuse for that. And the final deliverable of like the album or whatever yeah. it is that does not need to be two and a half years later. I get all the time, because uh, you guys know that every single Monday I do Q and A's where you guys can uh, send in questions on Instagram. And every single week, it's like, it's been X amount of time. Should I be worried yet? Should I be right. concerned yet? I, I haven't heard anything from my photographer or they're not being responsive. And I'm like, oh. Oh, this is not. You just listened to like six red flags, <laughs> <laughs> by the way. Non-responsive, haven't heard from them. Yeah. They're not telling me what to expect next. All, yeah. all along the same line. So how do they spot that before that becomes a problem? Like, Ooh. like should they see a deliverables in a contract or in a proposal somewhere? Of like, I know I should have this in my hands in like six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. I think if you do not get a response back quickly when you're a potential client, mm -hmm. when they want your business the most, really, that's when you know. Like yeah. that's when you know right off the bat, okay, they took a week to get back to the fact that I'm trying to give them money. <laughs> Think of how they're gonna respond when you've already given them all, all yeah. your money. 
So that is a factor. And then if they're not setting client expectations right up front, mm -hmm. you know, ask them to walk you through the entire process. I love when my, my couples ask me that. I'm like, yes, I would love to walk you through because I am pretty darn proud of the fact that after the wedding, when you're celebrating your year anniversary and you're eating that cake topper, you're going to be looking through your wedding album during that time because you have already had it for a good six months. And that's something that I, I want to always catch my clients before they get to that point mm -hmm. um, because that's when like the heartache hits of like this, oh. I wanted this to be here already. We want to be reliving this moment. We want to be re-celebrating that. So let's say they do get to that point and the photographer has not returned the deliverables. Um, what is, yeah, I'm going to put you on the spot. We didn't even pre-discuss this. Oh, <laughs> what do they do? Oh, what do they do? Um, Okay, well, let's just say they promised your photos within eight to 12 weeks. Yeah. If it's 13, 14 weeks, 15 weeks, maybe just let that go for a second because, you know, it is a really busy season. If it goes past that, I'd start sending emails and, hey, can you just give me an ETA? Hmm. And they might give their excuses or reasons <laughs> why, <laughs> you know, what to expect. And if they yeah. set a new expectation that first time, just be like, okay, there's our new expectation. If they go past that, you know what? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yes. You can send them an email every other day. Yeah. I'm just like, we just, we want an update. We want to know what's going on. And I'm a huge fan of being polite and respectful. Right. Uh, but when you've breached the contract like that, it's it can be really frustrating. It is. It yeah. is. And it ultimately, I really think 2021 is the telling of which wedding vendors were not just good at their craft, but good at running a business also. I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, but somebody needed to. It just is, I know a lot of, a lot of vendors were trying to catch up from um, 2020 and, you know, uh, it's, I, I get it. And there was like this onslaught, um, mm -hmm. but I think it's really wise to make sure that um, a photographer also isn't taking, uh, biting off more than they can chew. Absolutely. So do you think it'd be prudent to ask like how many weddings you typically do in a year? Is that sure. like fair game or is it like doesn't kind of, I think that's perfectly acceptable. I tend to think people that do less weddings, it's more boutique style. You're going to get a higher quality. You're going to get more attention paid to you. But at the same time, let's just say I, for example, do about 20, 25 weddings a year. I would say the average photographer around 40. Yeah. And then volume studios, maybe 100 to 300. There's nothing wrong with any of those numbers as long as there's mm. staff to support it. Yes. And I know it's a very chic thing right now to be, oh, I'm a one-stop shop and I do everything myself, and that's great, but then you should only be doing 15 to 20 weddings. Yeah. But you tell me you do more, what staff do you have to support you? Personally, I have an office manager, I have a social media manager, I have a graphic designer, I have an editing house, so everything is done smoothly. I have not delivered a late thing in this entire crazy year where I've done double the amount of weddings I normally do. Oh, you're way, you're way cooler than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you're listing off all this staff, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've got, I got people. Yeah. Well, I got, sometimes it's just a company. Like my yeah. editing house, it's a company. Yeah. But I chose to do that. Because you've f streamlined your time specifically mm -hmm. so you can be more hands on with the client experience. Right. I want to be client facing. I want to be there and I want to answer your text message when you text me. Another red flag would be the attitude. Yep. Attitude. Mm. And we talked about their personality being like pleasant before and after the wedding, things like that. But what's their attitude about their photography, their work? Are, is your wedding for their work or is their work for your wedding? Can we get that cross-stitched on a freaking pillow? <laughs> <laughs> because ultimately yeah. that's what it is. I mean, I love to do all my artsy things. I want to try out my new gear on a wedding day, but that's not my goal. It can't be my goal. My goal has yeah. to be to serve my client primarily, and then if I have time, I'm going to try out that new thing. Yeah, I think that's something that I've seen before where um, – Spoiler alert, we're probably going to discuss this over on your channel, so you should head on over and check that out, um, where <laughs> ego can get in the way. Yes. And I don't mind a good, shiny personality. I yes. <laughs> <laughs> You don't. I, I have a lot of personality myself. I get that. Um, but as long as it doesn't get in the way or interfere with the couple's day, the couple's experience. Of course. Um, yeah, be as artsy as you want to. Just be on time. Right. Yeah. And do the things you have to do that aren't so artsy, like family photos. <laughs> yeah. In seven In to ten seven, minutes. Yeah. I, think, I think I need proof. Like, <laughs> I think I need, like, stopwatch next to you, proof, start to finish, because that, I, I, okay. Yeah, I have that. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Is 
it on your channel? Yeah, well, it's at speedposing.com. Okay. It's actually in the course. I teach other people how to do this. Oh um, my and gosh. it's literally like seven minutes. I got it all done. Photographers, please go out and get this course. <laughs> <laughs> please, they're begging you. Okay, so another, um, another red flag we talked about was cost. Oh, yes. This, I feel like, can go in either direction. It can. Um, where it could be like, way too expensive or way mm -hmm. too inexpensive or you know how many hours or so talk me through that that's a lot that i just dropped at your feet good luck. it is <laughs> well you know depending on where you are and this is at every level whether you're like super budget or you're super high end in your client's mind they have a cost associated with you or whatever it is going to spend for example um i have a cost associated with how much i would like to pay for socks I really hate actually buying socks, but if I get a pair of socks. It is kind of the worst. And it's a pack of five for a dollar, like I know they're falling apart on me mm. within like the next year. If I buy a pair of socks, that's like probably, I don't know, $10, those are probably good. And then like a $50 for five pair of socks, like no, you know, too much. Yeah. Yes. So it's kind of the same thing when it comes to photography. So wherever your budget is, you know what, if you're coming in too low, you're probably not gonna hit that high end client that you want. Yeah. But if you're coming in too high, you might not be hitting where your current market, um, who you're attracting to you. So now it's for a fun game. <laughs> for a client perspective, what should they be looking for when it comes to pricing? Uh, and I know it's, um, it's not fair to make that grand generalization because everywhere is different, cities mm -hmm. are different. So we can't really base it on like a certain number, right? Because right. it's all different. However, I would say things to look for are, does the photographer speak confidently when they say they're pricing? Mm -hmm. Because that can be an indicator of they're not where they should be. Do they discount their work if you hem and haw? Because then that indicates that they're not like confident about it or the value that they're giving isn't worth it necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, those, those kinds of things are, are little red flags to look for. Yeah, I think that there's a, there's a difference between like, here's my pricing, I'm really happy with it, I'm really proud mm -hmm. of it. Um, and then if you're like, well, can we remove? Nah, that's not really how this package works. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a different package that you can choose if you want to end up saving money, which is totally fine. Actually, I get, I'm gonna like tangent for a second. This is a question I get asked a lot. It's how does a client respectfully tell a photographer, like, I love your work, I can't afford that package, what can they trim off? Like, what mm -hmm. are some of those, how can they have that conversation? Literally what you just said. Because oh. <laughs> I, cu I customize my packages all the time. I have no interest in selling my clients something that they don't want or need. Yeah. So if you tell me you love my work, you want to work with me, here's my budget, can you create something custom for me that fits within my day? Fantastic. Yeah. I'll happily do that for you. For me, I think the red flag for cost is like, if as a wedding planner, I will know the general cost of what a photographer should look like in that area right. based on their experience. So like Southern California, if anyone was under 2,500, I'd be like, okay, I want to check their experience. Right. I'm not doubting their work. I'm not doubting their skill. I want to check their experience. I want to take a look at some of their galleries. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm going to kind of start. That's what would be a little, little tick in my brain. Um, or if it was like 1500 in Southern California, I'd be like, really? what's wrong? Yeah, did you start yesterday? What's wrong? <laughs> let me see your equipment. I know nothing, but let me see it anyways. It, yeah, yeah, so I think that could be the case. And, and then the exact opposite direction, you're probably, which I guess is not really even speaking to my budget crowd, you're probably not gonna be looking at photographers if they're gonna be over $10,000. Right. Um, so that's less of a red flag, but I think the cost being too low. Is a big indicator. Is a big indicator, or the day being too long. Oh. Do you ever see that? Like too many hours included? Like, oh, it'll, yeah. I'll do 12 to 14 hours. And oh, I'm like, no. why? <laughs> that's, that's a waste of your time. That's mm -hmm. a waste of your client's money. If you could learn to be more effective with your time, you wouldn't be needed for that amount of time. 100%. Right? As a matter of fact, I wish my clients would keep me a little bit less than they do because I know what they ultimately <laughs> use in their wedding album. Right. They don't use three hours of drug and dancing photos. They don't. No. It doesn't make it. It doesn't make the cut. <laughs> no. And then for me, it's the um, staying for all those just to capture the cake cutting. Uh, or cake cutting or, or grand exit yes and you're just like it's cute I'm like it is cute it's it's i love sparkly ex exit photos or bubbles or confetti or right. whatever you happen to be doing it's precious but for me and like you are paying for three hours of photos you will not use right you won't use yeah which is about for me fifteen hundred dollars that you are spending for that 
Like, is that sparkler exit worth $1,500? Or yep. can we fake it with your bridal party and family earlier in the night? Which is what I do. Dude, why are you the best? This is awesome. <laughs> okay, any other red flags that clients should be keeping an eye out for? I think those are the big ones. Those are the big ones. Yeah, communication and expectations, all of that. Yeah, and if you want to see some actual red flags in action, be sure to check out the video we are doing over on Vanessa's channel yes. where I share some things. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> like, already looking forward to it. So that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, Vanessa, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Taking right. time out of your crazy schedule <laughs> to be here. That was really sweet of you. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Uh, if you guys haven't done so already, head on over, check out Vanessa's channel and the video that we did over there. Jump on down there, like the video if you like the video, and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day brand. And until next week, bye guys. <laughs>